I kind of have a little bit of everything. So I've got all my law books here, leather working chemicals, airbrushes, special effects equipment, an original Cadbury's box. This is the coolest thing. So this is a 120 millimeter tank shell that came from the British Army. So the idea here is I want to be able to do demos with people and have all my electronics in one space that was pretty impervious. Um, so I built this and it's basically a mobile soldering station. So add power, the whole thing just runs off your mobile phone charger. So you can just turn it on and you can just let it go. You can extract any fumes, adjust the lights. I love this thing, it's uh, one of the best things I've ever built. I did two or three cosplays, and I was kind of like, yeah, these are great. And then I thought, wouldn't it be mad to do the biggest, most mechanical, most powered costume anyone has seen in Ireland? This is just self-expression in the most simplest way. I got into it because I started making stuff. My fiance basically said, Nathan, you should probably post this on Instagram. And then off it went. I've gotten really into making book nooks. It's been great to have something that you can literally stick up on a shelf. So it's not taking a huge amount of room. Your eyes are just drawn in and it gives a bookshelf so much more depth. And you can kind of look in and you see all these little books. It's just, it's such a different world. I was chucked off to boarding school when I was 13. It was very much pushed that, Nathan, you're gonna become a lawyer, and that's it, and, and nothing else matters. So I got a law degree. It was never my dream. I wanted to become an engineer. So I, I packed in the whole law thing, and I specialize now in regulatory compliance for investment funds. I'm really into making stuff. The amount of things I was doing just massively multiplied. So it stopped being just, oh, I'm doing this as an artistic outlet. It became much more of a, a lifestyle. I was very interested in computers and making things and mechanical things. I would unsuccessfully take things apart a lot. I remember I ruined my twin brother's uh, remote control car Christmas present. So while he wasn't there, I took it apart and then it didn't go back together. TOG, it's a hackerspace. So a place where people can come together and work on projects, share tools, share ideas. The building next to us uh, was used by a promotions company and they had launched, I think, 5,000 rubber ducks in the Liffey. But they threw all the ducks into a dumpster and we, we saw them and it was a case of like, we've got to do something with these. <laughs> Over the last few years, TOG has really focused on making uh, carnival games for Dublin Maker. So we're moving on this year to make a style of jumping game. Trina, who is based in Limerick, she is working on making the pressure pads for me. And then I have uh, Louise helping me on the visual design. And then I have been mainly doing the uh, electronics. So we have all that uh, cross-pollination of different uh, skills and uh, different aspects that people can bring to projects. How does um, the player know that they've scored? or that they've hit the object. So we could do like a uh, playing card. And we're going to have these false feet uh, attached to motors. And so as you hit your left arrow key, this random leg is going to move uh, in a great comical fashion. Where like, you know, the robot jumps to the left 
I kind of grew up around tech and I've always loved it. Like I taught myself to code as a kid. I was a huge gamer. The main reasons why I got into making was I needed something to keep my brain uh, engaged because um, I had a lot of stress in my life. You get so engrossed in your project that it, all of that other stress just sort of dissipates. Even though I was very successful with my design business, I was never really producing uh, the kind of work I wanted to make. Around 2008, I had my first child. And I had to take a career break around that time. Like, Liam was born with some health issues. So I was in and out of children's hospitals and very unsure about um, my life direction because of his diagnosis. So um, throwing myself into fun projects um, uh, was a great way to distract myself from the seriousness of my day-to-day -day existence. You have me backed in a corner, that's so not fair. <laughs> I'm really mad about science. I'm really mad about how, what, and why. Exploration and discovery, what can we do? During the lockdown, my discovery really has been um, discovering the materials I have at home that I'm gonna throw in the bin and what can I do with them. So here is a milk carton. For this, I was making a stencil, so I just cut out triangles then in the diamond. I don't know why triangles. My whole house is where I live is covered in triangles, and then the bike got covered in triangles. And it's like these triangles followed me off down the street and into another world, and everywhere is triangles. So triangles have just escaped out of me, and so <laughs> I suppose I've just been working with that shape. Basically, I would draw this design here onto this bag, cut it out, and then I sew them together to get this shape. Then I sort of said, well, let me make a lamp out of it. I've really enjoyed like the fact that I'm reusing it rather than just throwing it in the bin. Like that's something as an environmentalist that really attracts me. But it's also the material itself and what else can it do? Like why is it just doing one purpose? So then I do, all I have to do is cut off this with a small hacksaw and that will basically stick in there and give me the top of the lamp. I was cycling past this place <laughs> in Clontarf and I saw orange coffee bags and my favorite color is orange. So I rang them up and I said, look, this is a really weird request. <laughs> Can I just have your orange coffee bags when you're finished selling people the coffee? And they said, absolutely no problem. We'll keep them for you. But I really love this fabric. So I love the idea of using it for multiple things. Since I was a kid, I've always loved like maths and science and making things with my hands. My dad did science in college, he did geology. I do have a curiosity in science from that. I know I was the only one to go into engineering from my year in school out of 100 girls, and it was an all girls school. I've just always found it fascinating since I was a kid, just going into space, going to Mars, going to the moon. I've just kind of always thought that was really cool. Max is suitable for an environment that we don't know what to expect. In robotics, there's a lot of land robots, and then there, there are some underwater robots, but there's none that can really do both. That was the goal, to create an amphibious robot. I have probably seven, maybe eight different bodies that he was put in. And then these are the motors. I needed 360 degree motion, so I modified them, which means I broke a lot of them in the process. 
So there's definitely a lot of designs um, and a lot of failure designs to get to the right one. I had to give them eyes. I thought the bigger ones were just more fitting. <laughs> um, yeah, they were actually very difficult to find. People thought he's, he's very cute. I've wanted to be an astronaut since I was a kid, so I guess that's the ultimate dream. But um, I definitely want to focus on robotics and work on developing uh, maybe exploratory robots. How I got involved in Dublin Maker is I just posted a video of my project on LinkedIn and Jeffrey saw it and then invited me to the event. I think it's very good that families can come in maybe with younger girls and they can see these kinds of things, see what's possible and just kind of be exposed to different areas that they may not be otherwise. To see myself a girl that they could then follow and do the same and that it is possible. So before Dublin Maker, I had been going to a lot of kind of larger scale uh, hacker events. After going to those events, meeting people and getting you know, right into how they made their projects, it filled me up with a sense of uh, enthusiasm to go and make things myself. We had to make it as a family fair, as a place where you can look at the prototypes, look at the, the dead ends, the, the failed aspects, and really get a sense that, OK, these people aren't uh, geniuses off the charts. These people aren't something that I can't achieve. That a lot of people that we had showcase at the, at the events are just ordinary people who have a, a passion for something and they followed it. This year for Dublin Maker, I decided to do uh, cement casting. I'm not going out and buying really expensive silicone. I'm going to buy that silicone you use for your tiles and have a go and let's see where I get. I do really love people, and what I love about people is their quirkiness. And I really think the Mega Fair is a fantastic mix of quirkiness and craziness and everything else mixed in. And I suppose that's what really attracted me to it. And I learned a hell of a lot myself there. I mean, seeing what other people do, like there's so many interesting projects. People have called me a big kid, and I can see how some people would see makers as big kids. It's more than that, like it's how discoveries are made. Basically, it's set and it's hard, so it just <laughs> comes out of the tub. Um, and then to get the shape out, you literally just press it out. And then inside that mold, I have the, this shape to put the cement in. But I do like the idea that it's community and it's safe and uh, there's equal quirkiness there or more quirkiness or whatever. And, uh, you're not the weird one. <laughs> I was thinking, what am I going to make for Dublin Maker? And my partner was like, you should make a Lord of the Rings book knock. I, I, I'd appreciate that. And I was like, I can do that. I can make this. So the idea is the doors of Durin. You can wire it with a hell of an awful lot of lights, stick an Arduino in it, some microprocessor, stick uh, sound in it, stick lights in it, and we can do so much with an epoxy uh, river in it. And it'll just be a huge amount of detail in a tiny little space. It's the act of making. And the Irish maker community, it, it, it's really about kind of uh, sharing of knowledge and sharing of experiences so that we all become better and we all learn something more. And the sense of being helped and the willingness to help others is really the, the foundation of that. Now what I make is, you know, it gets an awful lot of approval from people. It makes me feel happy, it makes other people feel happy. There's no rules to what you can and cannot do here, and I love that, because, you know, my, my life can be very, very constrained um, in other ways. Uh, so I can, I'm free to do whatever I, I want. If I would come in here at three o'clock in the morning to do a bit of soldering, nobody's going to bat an eyelid. This is my spiritual home.